Probably the earliest version of leaf springs were flexible wooden poles used in carriages in ancient Rome. In the early 19th century, metal leaf springs were developed. Today, the journey continues, and it's fairly smooth thanks to these suspension springs. A leaf spring is a stack of curved plates or leaves, or sometimes even just one. This spring has the flex to absorb bumps and dips in the road, but it's strong enough to provide serious support. Today, these super strong suspension springs are generally used for trucks and other heavy vehicles more than cars. Production starts with spring steel. It's an alloy that has elasticity. Big shears cut the steel to various lengths for a multi-leaf spring. It's one of two kinds of leaf springs. Using a bandsaw, they cut steel for the other kind of leaf spring known as a full taper spring. It's made of one to four leaves that are approximately the same length, but various thicknesses. After cutting, they rapidly heat the ends. Computerized machinery rolls and stretches the piece to a tapered profile. This achieves the same flex effect as the progressively shorter leaves on the multi-leaf spring, but the end product will be lighter and not as stiff. Next, it's into a press that trims the stretched ends and punches holes for various components. It takes about an hour for the steel to cool down for the next operation. Meanwhile, other members of the team are hard at work on the multi-leaf spring. They feed the heated tip of the main leaf to a machine that wraps it around a die form. This creates an eye mount for attaching the spring to the vehicle. They create an eye mount on the other end as well. Next, they curl the ends of a slightly longer steel bar into a loose C shape. This piece will serve as an outer protective wrap for the main leaf and protect the eye mounts. Back to the taper spring now. Hydraulic machinery bends it to the final Z shape, so it will fit around a vehicle axle. They quench both the taper and multi-leaf springs in oil, and then temper them in a furnace to strengthen the steel. Then it's time for a process known as peening. Machinery clamps the steel leaf onto a carriage, which takes it through a chamber for blasting with tiny steel pellets. The blasting changes the surface tension, further strengthening the metal. A worker now assembles the multi-leaf spring. He inserts a pin through the center of the main leaf and the wrap to align them. Each of the next leaves is shorter than the last. They're known as graduated leaves. It's a design that will make the spring more flexible. He transfers the stack to a hydraulic station and inserts a different pin for more precise alignment. He activates the hydraulic mechanism and it squeezes the leaves together. The mechanism maintains the leaves under tension as he removes the pin and now bolts them together. He pounds clips installed at specific locations on the spring to close them around the leaves. The clips tighten the stack all the way across and will stop the leaves from twisting or turning. Next, another hydraulic device applies pressure, this time to simulate the load the spring will carry. This sets the spring to a specific height and compresses it to stiffen the overall performance. The worker measures the spring to confirm that it meets the specifications. The assembled leaf springs now take a quick dip in a tank of black paint. The paint coats the leaves, clips and fasteners to give these suspension springs a uniform finish. Painted black, they should blend in with all the other components on the vehicle undercarriage. Now complete, these leaf springs can be depended on for support when the going gets rough. <laughs>